My name is David Laurie Vanderbeek. I am the Constitution Party's candidate for governor of the state of Nevada in 2014. Over the past two weeks, I've done two videos that have received a phenomenal response from patriots across the country and around the world. The first is entitled, Did Obama Order Sandy Hook Shooting to Get Your Guns? And the second is, If Obama Sends Police to Take Your Guns, Civil War. Please continue to support those videos in our effort to restore the Constitution. I have been touched by your response to those messages, and so I created this video uh, for the cause of our freedom, which I hope you will accept. Please respectfully watch the video in its entirety before commenting. As before, I'm going to give you the punchline first, or reason for the title, and then list my supporting evidence. I understand that my presentations are long, but I know that they are also engaging people because I can see that statistically people have watched those two videos for over 760,000 minutes, which equates to 12,700 hours or 531 days. That's a lot of watching and listening. It means that you're taking my words in. It means that your attention span is very long when the information is real and true. The first part of this video is a personal message to Mr. Barack Hussein Obama. The second part is a message to you, my fellow Americans. Mr. Obama, here is the bottom line. You and I are not compatible to live under the same government. It is clear that your mission is to destroy the United States constitutional government. My mission is therefore to emasculate your presidency. You will not retire in luxury, Mr. Obama. You will lose everything that you've stolen and you will spend the rest of your life in jail. So enjoy your million dollar vacations now because your current lifestyle will come to an abrupt end. This is why it behooves you to put me on the White House kill list now, because if you let me live, I will ensure that you will be convicted, sentenced, and punished for the crimes I will list in this video. Let me emphasize, Mr. Obama, I wish you no physical or emotional harm, and I will give my life to save yours even though you would kill me. I already forgive you. I'll explain that more further on, but I mean to destroy your political legacy, and as a gentleman, I'm letting you know that up front. Let's be clear. You are an egomaniac. The people of the United States of America did not elect you to be president. The electronic voting machines elected you as president. If you had been content to be a one-term president, I would have let you have that honor and retire with dignity. But you have grown especially greedy and reckless, for which you will now be held accountable. You will be known in American history as a disgrace. Patriots, including myself, are coming to find out everything about you, everything that you've stolen and every law that you've broken. You're going to be the focus of my efforts. But that does not mean everyone else will get off free. You tell your cabinet, Congress, Wall Street, the government agencies, current retired living U.S. presidents, and the Bilderbergers that they are next. Mr. Obama, I completely understand that you aren't the whole problem. But you are a symbol of the whole problem. And that is why I'm focusing on you. I give you my oath of honor that after you are in jail, we will prosecute others and you won't be punished alone. Let them know that they will receive mercy for their co cooperation. We the people, we the people's purge of the government is coming unless you step down and assist us in restoring constitutional law. I'm a forgiving person. If you right your wrongs and give back the money you've stolen and confess all your crimes to the people, then you can receive mercy. But not for your own sake, rather for the sake of the dignity of the office of president. 
This isn't going to be a French or German or Russian style purge. There will be no guillotines or firing squads. It is going to be lawful, constitutional, and orderly. Nonetheless, crime will be punished. Victims will receive acknowledgement and compensation. You will do hard time. And if you choose to get nasty, then we won't judge you. We'll hand you over to the CIA black torture squads you've created and let them do to you as you have done to others. You will be placed in the pit you dug for innocent Americans. Americans have to realize that if they want good leaders who will guide them safely, that they have to support them, or tyrants like you, Mr. Obama, will simply kill people like me. My life is in the hands of the American people. Their support will keep me alive so that I can investigate and prosecute all the crimes you've committed against them. The criminal activity in our capital is out of control. The money changers have taken over the temple. Mr. Obama, you have prostituted yourself. If I die standing up to you, it will not be meaningless, because whatever you do to me will be a symbol of what you will do to the American people if they do not stand up to you, and they will deserve it. I understand that world history is on the side of tyrants, but American history is not. And if I give my life to stand up against you, I've seen enough of the American people to know that they're worth it, even if they don't believe that. Maybe I'll be thrown in jail and no one will protest. Maybe I'll be murdered and no one will care. But what I'm doing is right, even if I stand alone. I want I know you want to be a dictator, and I'm here to bring you down. I live without fear, and that is the distinguishing characteristic of real Americans. I speak the way all our leaders should, and I don't hear it, so that's why I'm running. I am the change I wish to see, and I am the leader I wish to have. Mr. Obama, you treat America like a whore that you can rape, abuse, and throw away. America deserves leaders who will love her, woo her, and treat her with virtue and sanctity. As long as I live, I will strive to win back America from her abusive relationship with you, Mr. Obama. I would try to win you back with reason and morality yourself, but as with Hitler, I believe you are no longer a rational man. Your criminal mind is too far gone. You are a psychopath, and you need jail time and a lot of therapy. You have made choices that have sickened you. You may be insane, but your choices still have consequences. Mr. Obama, I'm now going to list your crimes and provide links, a few links, but your crimes are legion, and no one uh, of them was done in a corner. The people can find all the information themselves if they do a little homework. You could go to prison for any one of these, and you will go to jail for all of them. Number one, <clears throat> the fact that I can even ask to be placed on a White House kill list is a reason that you should go to jail for treason. No American should ever be denied due process of law you cannot suspend the Constitution. Simply knowing that you have a White House kill list is reason to get you out of office and impeach you. Number two, fast and furious. You gave guns illegally to Mexican drug cartels. But the reason you did that was to demonize the Second Amendment, which you're doing now with the Sandy Hook shooting which you've done with other shootings. So, number two, just using those operations to demonize the Second Amendment is reason enough to put you in jail. Number three is part of that, it's related, it is your working, the fact that not only did you give guns out for the commission of crimes, You've committed an in international crimes and offended the Mexican people because you've helped the drug cartels, which means you've assisted 
the drug war, but you're assisting the wrong side, not the side of the American people. You're helping the criminals that our law enforcement are trying to fight. For that, you should go to jail. Number four, Benghazi. You've lied from day one about putting that ambassador in a situation where you knew he would be killed. You've tried to cover it up. And for that, you should go to jail. ACORN. ACORN is an organization that you worked with that has supported and funded you. It is a radical organization and it is known for committing widespread voter fraud. You help them and they help you. And for that, you should go to jail. Solyndra and campaign fund fi fi uh, fundraising. This is where you give people a bunch of grant money. You make sure they get money and then they donate to your campaign and then they go bankrupt. So it's like the creating of a company so that you can get, see them get government grants, which will then be fed back into your campaign. For that, you should go to jail. The government health care takeover. We both know that it isn't just about government health care or health care per se. It is a government takeover. It is a socializing of what is supposed to be a free market. It is an infringement of the fundamental freedoms that every state and citizen should enjoy. And for that tyranny and that takeover, you should go to jail. Rendition and secret arrests. You continue to arrest people secretly without due process around the world. And for that, you should go to jail. You've admitted to funding and arming Al-Qaeda. The same Al-Qaeda that grew out of the Mujahideen, which your own Hillary Clinton admitted that we created. So we created them, we fund them, and they fight for us, but we're supposed to also believe that they carried out 9-11 and every other terrorist attack that justifies this police state. We know exactly where they're at, but the TSA still has to go in our pants at the airport to look for them. Not my pants. For your support of Al-Qaeda, you should go to jail. Number 10. Invading the Middle East. Invading the Middle East country of the month. Sovereign nations that pose no threat to America. Libya. Syria. Egypt. What's next? For that, you will go to jail. Continuing the false war on terror. Even though at the same time you wage the war on terror, you're saying that you can embrace the people that have waged the war on terror. The contradiction is glaring. You're putting people in harm's way for a false war. You've lied. You said you would bring those troops home. For that, you will go to jail. You've also said, number 12, you're taking military action under the United States. Uh, not under the United States Congress, but under the United Nations permission and authority. You're saying that you don't need permission from the Congress, according to the Constitution, to wage war. For that, you will go to jail. 13. You're granting foreign aid, more foreign aid to countries, 80% more than you spend on securing our own borders. You're, you're giving money away and stealing it from the American people who need it. For that, you will go to jail. 14. The National Defense Authorization Act, Chris Hedges the famous uh, journalist and author is has his uh, lawsuit against you and they've temporarily won but you want to be able to arrest secretly citizens and detain them 
without giving them any due process here in the United States of America. For that treason, you will go to jail. You continue, 15, you continue to support and endorse TSA abuse of Americans. They're molesting Americans. They're robbing Americans. And now they're going to sporting events and political events to carry on these abuses. For that, you will go to jail. You're expanding the DHS surveillance and you're trying to establish a national police force. You're trying to take all local sheriffs and police departments and put them under the DHS. This is not authorized by the Constitution. It is tyranny. It is a police state. For that, you will go to jail. Number 17 is bringing in Russian troops. You're bringing in Russian troops, and I get that they're Caucasian and they look like us, and so if you put an American uniform on them, nobody will know the difference until they open their mouths. But you brought them in to run operations to seize our CIA as well as um, the uh, national uh, security buildings in Denver and Utah, in Colorado and Utah. So you're allowing Russian troops, who are our enemies, to conduct war games here that mimic taking over parts of the United States. You've also allowed Russian generals into NORAD. For that treason, you will go to jail. Number 18, Putin has replaced nuclear weapons in Cuba. And that's in the Russian news, that there are Russian nuclear missiles in Cuba pointed at the U.S. now. And you have done nothing about it. And for that treason and that lack of, of duty to protect the American people from our enemies, you will go to jail. Number 19, Janet Napolitano, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, has been exposed in her lesbian sex scandal where she's been exploiting male employees and making them do sex acts to get promotions. Uh, you have not held her accountable. And you must endorse that kind of behavior. And for that, you will go to jail. You have lied about who your real parents are, your, particularly your father, specifically. Your real father is Frank Marshall Davis. He is, was a Chicago communist organizer and a pornographer. For lying to the American people about who you really are, you will go to jail. Number 21, you are not acting as a president. You don't act like a president. And that's why you're using a machine to sign laws. You're not signing the laws themselves. So the things that you're doing, you're, try, you're, you're acting as if you're putting your name on them without being responsible. If you're going to be president, you need to put your name so on something and sign it yourself. So for being a fraud as a president, again, you will go to jail. 22, you continue to use drone attacks to kill people secretly. You're murdering innocent people using drones. And you're waging foreign wars without the authorization of Congress using those drones. And you want to expand the use of drones to cover the United States citizens like myself that would stand against you. And for your use of drone attacks, you will go to jail. Number 23 is the evidence of your homosexual lifestyle. Now, Jerome Corsi is the scholar that's hunted down the information. Frankly, I don't care if you're homosexual. But again, you're being a fraud because 
You present yourself as a Christian family man, traditional family man. And you're not. If you're gay, just be gay. I have more respect for Larry Flint than I do for you. Because Larry is what I would call honestly wicked. That's one of the things I respect about Las Vegas. They call themselves Sin City. They know they're sinners, but they're not hypocrites about it. And from a mental health perspective, that's far healthier than allegedly religious people like yourself who proclaim their virtues to conceal their own sins. If you're a sinner, just say it. If you're gay, come out of the closet. Be honest. Number 24 is depleted uranium weapons. You're raining down depleted uranium on people in the Middle East, which is a war crime. These are what are known as dirty bombs. You're also allowing our American soldiers to be exposed to those weapons, which is poisoning them. You're exploiting our soldiers and treating them like slaves and killing them. And you're committing war crimes on people. For that, you will go to jail. 25. 25 is your exploitation of false flag events, government-created crises such as the Sandy Hook school shooting. So you carry out the terrorist attack, you blame it on good American citizens, and then you use it to increase your power. And for that, I would refer you back to my video on the Sandy Hook shooting. For your, for your exploitation and your use of terror, you will go to jail. When I'm governor of Nevada, if you are a criminal or mafia, but you have evidence that will lead to the conviction and imprisonment of Barack Obama. I will give you police protection and clemency. Under my leadership, Nevada will become a haven for government and corporate whistleblowers. We will provide you with all the legal assistance you need to prosecute the law. Remember, if any of these crimes implica implicate previous U.S. presidents such as Bush or Clinton, they will go to jail too. Mr. Obama, I realize there is no way around this conflict. I invite you to use any and all resources available to you to destroy me. It should be easy for you to get me. You mur murder people every day. But you will fail, and I want you to know what a failure you are. I will show America the pathetic and weak man that you are, and they will wonder how you ever became so powerful. You aren't the only one with friends, and it's debatable whether you have any real friends because everyone around you is probably using you for something and vice versa. The longer you ignore me, the stronger I'll grow. The more you oppose me, the more you'll expose yourself. The more you hurt me, the more the American people will see you for the piece of gutter trash you are. People think that you have to be poor to be trashy, no, much of the American elite society are trash, and you know it firsthand, Mr. Obama, because you know Janet Napolitano. Mr. Obama, I say you are a coward. You'll do what cowards do, and you'll back down and sink into your hole. Mr. Obama, you have your task, and I have mine. Now, I want to address my fellow Americans I've compared Obama to Hitler, and I need to say I'm tired of all the apologists for Hitler. So many people today believe Germany was guiltless in World War II. Uh, my own grandparents were victims of Nazi war crimes in Holland. I have no tolerance for people who would revise history to cover up mass murderers. Nothing is hidden, but it will be revealed. So I can see what Obama's doing. So please don't come to me anymore and tell me that Germany didn't do the things that they did and that Hitler didn't do the things that he did. Now, my fellow Americans, you don't have to stay in these abusive relationships with leaders who hate you. I and leaders like me would not harm you. We would teach you and create solutions with you that bring out the best in all of us. 
To all you Americans, patriots or not, let me be very clear. If anyone ever lays a finger of harm to President Obama or his family, you are not a patriot. You are an enemy to this nation. No harm must come to him. He is our president, and I would personally give my life to save Obama's for five reasons. Number one, it's not for him. It's for the sanctity of the office of president. Presidential assassination destabilizes a nation. It traumatized our nation when JFK died. The office of president deserves protection. Number two, I want Obama to live a long, full life in prison for his crimes as a traitor. And I want him to think about his choices every day. Number three, Obama loves to play the victim using the race card whenever he doesn't get his way. So we cannot give him any justification in playing the victim. Number four, Obama already plans to fake his own assassination so that he can play the victim and use that to justify more police state controls such as confiscating firearms. Number five, and finally, I never want to see the American people confuse Mr. Obama with a real martyr because it is an honor he will never deserve. I repeat, anyone who even utters a threat against the physical safety of Obama is not a patriot. You are a fool. You are my enemy. Let us all take an oath now to protect Mr. Obama's life so that he can spend the rest of it in jail to be remembered in history as a traitor, coward, criminal, and liar. Don't ever speak of harming any of the criminals in our government. We must follow the Constitution and give them the very due process of law that they would deny us, so that we will be justified in the eyes of world history and God himself in all that we do. We must have clean hearts and pure intentions, or we will become, like Obama, drunk with power. We must bind ourselves down with the Constitution. I'm not a constitutionalist when I feel like it or when I find it convenient. I always follow the rule of law and recognize the natural rights of all human beings, especially the accused. I'd rather see or set a guilty person free than ever be guilty of condemning an innocent person. We have to clean up our government, but this is not a witch hunt. We're not going to obsess over crimes. I'm here to help you punish crimes so that we can restore freedom and get back to doing whatever we enjoy. We will heal as a nation, forgive, and move on to better things, even if some crimes go unpunished. Vengeance is ultimately the Lord's. He will repay in His time and His way. But sometimes He provides us with justice like He is using me to correct Mr. Obama. As evil as Obama is, he is still a child of God created in his image. And my brother, Brother Obama, I love you. I pray for you. I would give my life for you. That is why I must stop you from hurting this nation any further. I will honor you whenever you are honorable, but you have committed crimes and you must accept responsibility. At this point, you may be wondering who I am and why I have no fear of retaliation. That's no one's concern, really. Let's just say I've been given a vision of America's future and the leaders like Obama are not in it. Let's keep this all in perspective. When we wit wit witness the vast expanse of the universe, the act of service I'm performing here is quite minuscule in the grand cosmic scheme of things. The support of the American people is what will preserve my life here on Earth so that I can live to do the work that will preserve your freedom. People have said they support me in my political aspirations. I have no political aspirations. I'm just an American man, and I want to be free. I don't care about votes or popularity. I just want to live my, with my life with my wife and children in peace. I want the government to stay out of my wallet. And I want the TSA to stay out of my wife's pants. Is that too much to ask? If you had already known me before seeing this video, nothing I'm saying here is new or unusual coming out of my mouth. I've been contacting the government for years. People fear being put in FEMA camps and put on lists or being arrested in the night. 
I contacted the government years ago and told them that if they're assembling a list of constitutionalists to put in camps, to put me on the list. I've also told them that if they ever try to force vaccinate me, that I will stick the syringe in their eye and call it the new shot heard around the world. I've also told them that if they ever try to enforce the NDAA anywhere in my vicinity, that I will not wait in my house. I will go out into the night, even if I have to go alone. I will kill whoever the government sends, and I will send their hands back to their leaders. Now, I recommend that you watch a YouTube playlist called John Quaid, Q-U-A-D-E, which will be linked below. It's an interesting explanation of what American freedom used to be. He has an interesting take on the first battle of our American Revolution at Lexington and Concord. On April 19, 1775, British soldiers entered Lexington and Concord, Massachusetts to seize the firearms of our American ancestors. Their pastor, Jonas Clark, taught, and they believed, that no Christian can engage in aggressive warfare, and the only warfare a Christian can ever engage in is in defense of a just cause, and only after his blood has been shed. And so, when the British entered Concord, our fathers lined up with their weapons at ease on their side, not pointed at the, at the British, on the, uh, on the green in front of the Lexington Congregational Church. The British commander ordered them to disperse three times, and they stood firm. The British then aimed at and to fire at our American fathers while our fathers did not aim back, and they were fired upon and gunned down. Then our fathers returned one fire, and after that they retired from the field. Why did that happen? Because they preferred to die for the rights of God than the privileges of men. But they had to first voluntarily shed their blood and allow their lives to be taken to redeem the land from tyranny. Eight of our fathers died and none of the British. A woman later saw Pastor Jonas Clark and grabbed his sleeve so hard she tore it off. And she said, There, Jonas Clark, are you satisfied with what your preaching has done? And he answered, I am not sorry, for from this day the world will mark the birth of liberty. I ask you, where are the American men and women of liberty today? Rise up and be counted. Are we patriots or do we just call ourselves patriots? Our American fathers and mothers had no army and no training, and by the grace of God, they defeated the greatest military army in the whole world of their day. Don't ever forget that. So now what? I have one task for all of you as Americans. You are to contact the White House and demand that your names be added to their kill list. You've got to get in their face. If you were very clever, you would start a petition at the White House website and add your names in defiance of Obama's tyranny and his kill list. That is your assignment. I am David Laurie Vanderbeek. I am of sound mind and perfect physical health. I use no prescription medications. I have never used illegal drugs, smoked, or drank alcohol. I love my family. I love my life and I would never commit suicide. I am the Constitutional Party's candidate for governor of the state of Nevada in 2014.